Amen. All right. So here we go. Uh, hopefully everything's working now and you can hear me okay. I'm, I'm going to move along as quickly as I possibly can. And um, we'll uh, get to it here. We're running really late here. So anyway, but I uh, hope you had a good weekend and uh, all that good stuff. I, I know that it was uh, busy here, and, and I'm sure it was busy for you, too. Hang on one second here. I'm just... That's the wrong one here. So anyway, uh, it was busy. It was busy for sure around here, as it always is. And um, we uh, always seem to keep doing what the Lord has called us to do, no matter what goes on or what happens. God just keeps uh, giving us strength and energy to fight the good fight here. Uh, flies and, and, and all kinds of things going on here. Uh, Oh, I'm glad you listened to that one on Marcion. Uh, that that was the chief heretic of the second century there. And, uh, yeah, he was a bad one. So, anyway, I, I don't know how many times you tried to get on this. I kept erasing it. So, I erased all of them just so nobody's confused. And they if they try to – actually, if they try to link up to this, to any of those, it should take them right to this broadcast. But I'm not sure because I don't think the, the stream key changed at all with any of it. So, We'll see uh, what happens with that. Uh, good to see everybody on here, though. Uh, Peter and Joe and Carl and Betty, Mary, Pilgrim, and let's see. My wife is on here, Nate Gross. That is, uh, that song was, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Uh, let's see. Aaron's on here. So good. Well, we'll get started here and and um, constantly uh, <laughs> uh, trials and and uh, temptations that befall us along the way. Right? That's the Christian life we live. There's always something going on, and uh, you know we're going to cover this today just because. We're going to continue on in this rock series, this series on rock music and rock musicians and musicians and everything. And you know, I'm gonna let's see, is that the one? Yeah, I'm hoping YouTube doesn't. I'm hoping this will be fair use and that G. Craig Lewis's ex ministries won't kick me out for this. Or they, they, it won't pull a, a a thing on it or whatever. But anyway, we'll see. It, a copyright thing, because I'm not doing it for profit. It says something in his things about as long as it's not non for profit or whatever. So maybe that's okay with all that. Because um, I, I don't, I'm not making any money or anything like that. So this is this is just to inform people and tell them of the truth. Uh, and he's got some good stuff in there that I want to show you uh, on on what we're going to talk about today. Um. As far as updating, you, you, you've got to go into succession. So what I'm saying is you start with the history of it, and why is that? Why am I starting with, like, history and older people and all those other things? Well, first of all, you guys don't realize that millions upon millions upon millions of people still listen to rock music's original music heavy metal music, the legends of those, that that's still in play. You know, that that's still that's still in play. It it isn't it isn't um it it isn't out of play with people. And you you you've got to prove that the root of it all is terrible and rick wicked and rotten. And then you move on to more of the fruit of it. Rap music, and we're going to talk. We're going to start to talk a little bit about some of those people today. You know, um, and we'll get into. 
let's see yep, single page okay there we go we'll get into it today and again david cloud's resource rock music very good resource uh, you can download that free from his from his page and uh and also he took from some others as well as as i'm going to and you know some others that gathered the information for us together and i never think it's wrong to borrow somebody else's brains and and to use uh their materials uh for uh for helping other people so anyway um So I got people trying to get a hold of me, and I have all kinds of things happening. That's just the way it goes here. I'm just going to have to put that on silent. Um, anyway, all right, let's get going here. I've had enough, enough time and enough frustration. I think I'll just get going here and get it started. But uh, we're going we're gonna to talk first. We are going to... How in the world did I get Baptist history up there? That's not what I'm looking for. Here we go. So we're going to talk about rock musicians... And we're going to talk about the fact that basically they confess to being devil-possessed. Many of them. Many of the legends of that. Now, I realize, but listen, you have to understand, my primary audience is not 14-year-old teeny boppers, okay? That's not my audience. My, my primary audience is not is not little kids. It's adults that are, that are probably in between 20 and maybe 50 years old or even older. So, I mean, it's, there's a, there's a, there's a, a vast difference in that. And so we're going to talk about, uh, we're, we're going to talk about this right now. In the following statements, rock musicians describe an outside power to which they were connected or which was actually possessed them while they wrote. So they talked about, they talked about who their God was and who they followed. And there's a lot of wicked men and women in the rock industry that are devil possessed, that follow Satan. The Bible says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, and the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had all our, conversa our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So, these people have some old devils in them. And we'll talk about hip hop and rap and those other things later. We'll get deeper in there, but you got to work your way through it in order for you to understand. Just like when I talk about Baptist history, I talk about a legacy of Baptists right from the apostles. And we go down through the line of those that kept. The faith, once delivered unto the saints. Well, the same thing goes for these people. You start and you continue on and you press forward to, be, to the future, to, to where we're at now. It's easy to understand. Very easy. Because I guarantee you, you got more of a problem with parents and grandparents that are listening to this junk that's why they don't say anything to their children about the music they're listening to. I saw a Baptist preacher once give a say, oh man, I love that music, but I don't listen to it because I don't want my children to, to, well, the flesh loves a lot of things that are wicked. But I don't just do it so my children don't listen to it. I don't listen to it because God hates it. 
And they're a bunch of devils. Jimi Hendrix. His girlfriend, Fane Pridgun, said this. He used to always talk about some devil or something was in him, you know. He didn't know what made, what made him act the way he acted and what made him say the things he said. And the songs and different things that like it just came out of him. It seems to me he was so tormented and just torn apart. And like he really was obsessed, you know, with something really evil. Of course he was. Robert Plant and Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin. You know Led Zeppelin. These Baphomet homos. Bunch of Baphomet homos. Robert Plant and Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin both claim that they don't know who wrote their occultic song, Stairway to Heaven. Plant testified, Page, he had written the chords and played them for me. I was holding the paper and pencil. For some reason, I was in a very bad mood. Then all of a sudden, my hand was writing out words. I just sat there and looked at the words, and then I almost leaped out of my seat. Then, of course... The next group, right? Look, more homos, more absolute satanic homos. It's because of the Baphomet spirit they have. Peter Townsend of The Who says that he began acting as a medium for music when he learned to play the harmonica as a boy. Now listen to what he says here. I got lost in the sound of the mouth organ and then had the most extraordinary life-changing experience. Suddenly, I was hearing music within the music. Rich, complex, harmonic, harmonic beauty that had been locked in the sounds I'd been making. The next day, I went fly fishing, and this time, the murmuring sound of the river opened up a wellspring of music so enormous that I fell in and out of a trance. It was the beginning of my lifelong connection to what might be described as the music of the spheres. One day I found some chords that made me lightheaded. As I played when my body buzzed all over and my head filled with the, po the most complex, disturbing orchestral music. I had the ability to create alpha state music in my head. Go into creative trance and have musical visions. Since so much of this music bubbled up urgently from my subconscious mind, I left to interpret it much like anyone else. Right? There you go. Here's another guy. Right? Bruce Springsteen. In the end, you have to look at a song and not know exactly where it came from. Here we go. One of the most satanic bands of all time. Black Sabbath. Notice the Baphomet spirit possessed. Bill Ward of Black Sabbath, he said, I've always considered there was some way where we were able to channel energy. And that energy was able to be from another source, if you like. Like a higher power or something that was actually doing the work. I've often thought of us just being actually just the earthly beings that played the music because it was uncanny. Some of this music came out extremely uncanny.
It's amazing. See, look at them. This is the spirit. This is who they are. I mean, they look like they got devils in them. Stevie Nicks. It's amazing. Because sometimes when we're on stage, I feel like somebody's just moving the pieces. I'm just going, God, we don't have any control over this. And that's magic. Hmm. Well, at least they're not lying. Angus Young, lead guitar of ACDC. I mean, knows he's a devil, right? Just absolutely knows he is. Angus Young, lead guitarist for ACDC, is called the Guitar Demon. And he admitted that something takes control of the band during their concerts. It's like I'm on automatic pilot. By the time we're halfway through the first number, someone else is steering me. I'm just along for the ride. I become possessed when I get on stage. Yeah. Angus Young. Keith Richards. All these people that Keith Richards, the Rolling Stones. said that their songs come spontaneously like an inspiration at a seance. Well, they're not lying, are they? They're not lying. And arrived in Masse as if the Stones are songwriters, if the Stones as songwriters were only willing in open mediums. An open medium. Richard said that he received the opening riff to the wicked song, I Can Get No I Get No Satisfaction in a Dream. He woke up and sang it in a tape recorder. Very clear who their God is. Very clear that they peep and mutter and they have and they they get their power from devils. Right? Let's see. Oh, we're gonna talk about him in a little while here. Okay. We'll keep going here. Little Richard said I was who is by the way. The biggest homo. Biggest Baphomet sodomite you can ever imagine in your life. You know, these people try to say that people like him are saved, that they become Christians and all that kind of stuff. Still a sodomite, still run around the same thing.
and got the spirit of Baphomet. Little Richard said, I was directed and commanded by another power. The power of darkness that a lot of people don't believe exists. The power of the devil, Satan. Well, he's not lying, is he? One man said it this way, you can't describe it playing rock music except to say it's like a mysterious energy that comes from the metaphysical plane and into my body. It's almost like being a medium. Mark Storis, vocalist with heavy metal band Crocus. So you see, these men admit what the Bible talks about. Familiar spirits. Regard not them that have familiar spirits. Neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. See, they don't hide it. The Beatles. Bunch of God haters like you wouldn't believe. You're going to find out why Michael Jackson bought their albums and things like that. Their, their Sony playbook for a reason. They, the Beatles, were like mediums. They weren't conscious of all they were saying, but it was coming through them. That's what Yoko Ono said. Of the Beatles album Rain, which featured one of the earliest instances of backward taping, Ringo Starr said, I feel as though that that was someone else playing. I was possessed. I mean, you look into their eyes and they look like empty, dead souls. That's what they look like. You just see it in their eyes, the way they look. Well, look at the song. What did it say? If rain comes, they run and hide their heads. They might as well be dead. If the rain comes, if the rain comes, when the sun shines, they slip into the shade and drink their lemonade. When the sun shines down, when the sun shines, when the, when the sun shines, rain I don't mind, shine the weather's fine. I can show you that when it starts to rain. This song is so stupid. It's so absolutely brainless and stupid. John Lennon said about his music, it's like being possessed, like a psychic or a medium. See, these are those with familiar spirits. These are those people today. These are these musicians. These are these stars. They're the rock stars. You ever wonder about that? how they're called stars and how they all want to shine.
They all want to be number one. They all want to want to have the notoriety. Just like Satan. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. That's where the stars are. Right? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Like Michael Jackson, the king of pop, above all the other stars, right? I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. They all think they're God. They all have God complexes. Right? They all have these complexes where they want to be God. They think they're God. That's what they think, anyway. John Lennon thought he was going to put an end to Christianity. Well, that's just with Satan. That's, that's the same thing in Satan's heart. Right? That's the same thing in the devil's heart. Going to do away with Christianity. Going to defeat it. That's what they thought. That's the Beatles. But that's the audacity of Satan. I mean, let me show you why you can see that spirit. I mean... Or where you can see that same spirit. As these rock stars have. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith that if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee and in their hands shall they bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And again, the devil take them up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth them all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Right? Shows him everything. Telling him, all these things will I give you. By the way, that's how Satan works today. <coughs> that's how Satan works today. He works the exact same way. Still offering men the world if they'll follow him. Right? Right? The Antichrist is going to take the deal and he's going to run the world. That's what's, that's what's going to happen to the Antichrist. He's going to take the offer and he's going to run the world. See, the Lord Jesus Christ denied it. Hey, I'm going to have fun beating up on flies here. Got him, dead. Got him right there. So... 
Same offer is given to these guys. They talk about it. They all talk about the offer that was given to them. All of them, Rocksters, all of them. Um, what's his face at the crossroads? Um, I can't think of his name right now this second. Robert. Let's see. I think David Cloud has it on there. Robert Johnson. Thank you. Robert Johnson, right? See if he talks about it in here. But they all talk about it. You know, they all talk about they come to a crossroads, right? And they couldn't do anything else. They couldn't play. They weren't very good. But Satan offered them something. If they just opened themselves up to it, then he would give them everything. That's what he would do. John Lennon said this. He said, it's amazing. We'll show you John Lennon here. John Lennon. It's amazing that it, the tune to In My Life, just came to me in a dream. That's why I don't profess to know anything. I think music is very musical. He said, I felt like a hollow temple filled with many spirits. each one passing through me, each inhabiting me for a little time and then leaving to be replaced by another. It's true. Here it is right here. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and finding none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. When he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation." See that? That's what he said. They just fulfill scriptures, what they do. That's how it works. He said he felt like a hollow temple. Well, he was. See, when you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, when you reject God's word and you will not obey it and follow him, then what happens, you're ripe pickings for Satan. And what Satan's going to do when he gets a hold of you is destroy you. That's what he's going to do. That's what he does to all these guys. He just destroys them with fame and everything else. He destroys them with, with, with all those things. He destroys them with, with success. That's what he does. He'll do the same to you. Now, he might try to destroy a saved person with success... But he can't. See, God will take that saved person that's lifted up with pride, and he'll allow that saved person to be to be tried and to be brought down and to be brought to repentance. And it'll better them in the end. Isn't that something?
John Lennon, when the real music comes to me, it has nothing to do with me because I'm just a channel. It's given to me and I transcribe it. That's from the spirit into sound, the magic of music. That's what happens to them. No, I think they die because when Satan's done with you, he kills you. When you're of no use to him anymore, he puts you off in his obscurity. Seriously. You know, I've met people that... Uh, I've met people that were clearly antichrist that just went to churches to try to destroy him. And what are they now? Just in obscurity. Satan's finished with them. There ain't nothing, there ain't nothing left for him to do. Satan just... See, God uses people. Satan uses people up. That's how Satan does it. He just uses people up. That's what he does. That's how he operates. He just... Once Satan's done with you, he just leaves you out to rot in your own in your own suffering. God gathers the precious wheat into the barn. Satan, it just goes. It just goes and burns up the dross right on the floor. That's how it works. Paul McCartney said this, the music to yesterday came in a dream. The tune just came complete. You have to believe in magic. I can't read or write music. Well, I believe all those men died. I absolutely believe they died. I believe when God was done, I, I believe when um, when Satan was done with them and they rejected the God of the Bible, there was nothing left for them. Look at them. They all end up doped up and ruined. That's how they all end up. All right, we're going to talk about Michael Jackson here. Michael Jackson is called the king of pop. And he really was. Now, I'm hoping and praying this doesn't, my video doesn't get cut here, but I don't think it will. Um, you should, you know, you should, if you're interested, you should buy some of these um, videos, The Truth Behind Hip Hop at X Ministries. Um, this was not made by me, obviously. It was made by X Ministries. And he sells a series on the truth of hip hop. And I think I'm going to buy a bunch of them and I'm going to watch them. I've, I've bought a few. I, or I've, I've seen a few. I didn't buy them. I saw a few of them. But they're really good. And But you, I wouldn't watch them with your children. I would screen them first because they're a little raw. You know, he's dealing with a different... He's dealing with a different group of, of people. Okay? That people that are kind of hardcore that have been through a lot of stuff and seen a lot of stuff. You know, he's dealing with the black church mostly. And he speaks pretty rough. Jesus is But I can't close this out with talk, without talking about the king of pop. Now, I want you to picture this. I'd love to get uh, 
this pastor on for an interview and interview him. I would love to do that. I wonder if he would. Um, you know, I wonder if he'd do that. That would be awesome. Anyway, but uh, I should probably try to contact him and see if he would. I'd love to do a live interview with him and ask him a ton of questions. Uh, that would be cool. Anyway, but um, it would definitely be interesting because he's got a lot of good insight to that. That would be actually good. Maybe I will contact him. Uh, okay, anyway. Oh, I need a little time. But what, what my studies on this man has done is really summed everything that I've been preaching for the last 10 years up in the one person. On the surface, people cried and wept and mourned. Churches celebrated and wore a glove and sung. They sung his songs. And they didn't know that they were celebrating the most powerful Nephilim our music industry has ever seen. This ancient God that was in this man literally stole your heart. With some music. Yeah, this is what he's going to talk about. He's going to he's going to talk and I don't know anything about his personal life and it isn't really any of my business. I I don't know anything about it. I'm telling you he's telling I I believe he's telling the truth about this guy and about Michael Jackson and about the spirit that these people have in them and uh um Anyway, that's 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 what I'm that's what I'm doing. I, I I don't know anything about his church. I've never been there. I'm just telling you what what he's uh, or anything about his ministry in that sense. That's the point. So, anyway, he tells the truth about Michael Jackson. He tells the truth about the spirit that's in him. That's the point. Music. When he transformed himself into a woman you didn't care stole your heart when child molestation charges were brought up against him you knew they were false because he stole your heart when he bought the Beatles anthology so he could channel Alistair Crowley through it he stole your heart when he practiced witchcraft and became one of the most powerful channelers that we've ever seen, ever. Because when I look at Michael Jackson, I see artists that sell a few thousand, maybe even a million albums. And these guys destroy themselves. These guys sell themselves. These guys channel spirits, pray to Alistair Crowley, all of that. And I looked at him and I said, if they do all of that for a million records, what does it take to become the king of pop? The king of the devil's music. I'm going to show you. I mean, I guarantee I could say one thing for this guy. I don't know any other black pastors that I've ever seen besides one that would ever touch this. This. This isn't about who G. Craig Lewis is. This is about Michael Jackson. I'm not, I'm not going to get into... I, I don't know everything about that guy's life. I didn't tell anybody to go run off to his church and join his church. Okay? Just like I don't know anything about 023 on here that's talking about this guy. I don't know who you are. You could be a serial killer for all I know. You could be a... You could be... Uh, a child molester for all I know. I don't know anything about you. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you come from. I don't know anything about you. I don't know about fake names on the internet that people do 023. And I, I don't know who you are. But I know who Michael Jackson is. Now, can we stop talking about the height of some guy? Who cares? Why are we talking about like the height of two different... Some guy that impersonated Paul McCartney or something like that. Is there a reason why that conversation is really that important? That is the weirdest thing ever. How do people get so distracted like that? 
First thing Alistair Crowley teaches you in the 777 is to channel a powerful entity. Most of the time you get it out of a child. We'll talk about that later. But when this entity comes upon you, so what he did, he went and found the worshipers of Sibyl, or we would say Sibel. Sibel was an ancient goddess. So those men that worshipped Sibel were different. They were called. Michael says this pat who Michael, who cares what you say? you this is probably not even your name. Go away. I can't stand that stupidity. Go away. Go play games somewhere else. Alt Corey Fox. Now you've heard the term Now watch this. Because I'm telling you, listen to what he's saying here, okay? Just listen to what he's saying. About Michael Jackson. Man, you're acting like a Cory Bont, or you're acting Cory Bontis, which means wildly. But the group of men that cloned this phrase were worshipers of this goddess, Sybil, Sibel. I keep pausing it because I'm talking to you. And let me describe these to you. Now, these are some notes from any old encyclopedia. Cory Bontis, they had their hair dressed and waved like women. They were heavily made up with their faces resembling whitewashed walls. They were castrated and keepers of children and infants, partaking in coming of age rituals and celebrations. They practiced magic and divination to make money. Listen to this. They made wild cries or high pitched shrills while they performed their dances to the music of pipes and dull beats of the tamarind. Listen, when the deity or the gods would enter into them, they were possessed by divine power. They would dance uncontrollably in ecstatic frenzy. Here are some pictures just so you can get a good look. And I'm not, listen, y'all, please be serious with me. This is not funny at all. This man died in this, mm -hmm. okay? This is not funny. But he literally got put on out magazines. But just as like Michael, the archangel, I mean, the Bible says that we were made in God's image and his likeness. So our, our look is not far from God's look. But right here, they've got Michael and trying to make you think this is like Michael, the archangel, some seductive looking angel, because he kept his face in an ambiguous fashion where he really was genderless. See what I mean? Because that's the spirit that these people have. They're... They don't, like, just dream this stuff up out of nowhere. Devils give it to them, and they act like devils. Bonds. Let's go through some of his songs so you can kind of hear his signals, because they always have to signal you. We are the world. There's a line in We Are the World that is so demonic it's hard to believe that folks sung this in their churches in celebration to Michael Jackson, and it's down here. Michael wrote this part. It says, send them your heart so they'll know that someone cares, y'all know, and your lives will be stronger and free. Y'all remember that? Then he says, as God has shown us by turning stones to bread. Mm -hmm. If Jesus had obeyed Satan and turned stones to bread, all of us would be lost right now. Folks didn't even get it. They waiting for me to finish the song. <laughs> Here is a song where he's describing the Nephilim spirit in him. 
and telling you that the end is near. This is a song called Another Part of Me. There he is dressed up like evil Maria in the same thing like Beyonce wore. He said, we're taking over. We have the truth. This is the mission to see it through. Don't point your finger. Not dangerous. This is our planet. You're one of us. Okay, it sounds like he's talking something friendly or whatever, but listen. We're sending out a major love. This is our message to you. The planets are lining up. What does it mean in astrology? What does it mean in Greek mythology? What does it mean in the Mayans and the Sumerian cultures? All of these different cultures. What does it mean when the planets line up? That's the day that Nimrod comes and takes his throne and finishes the Tower of Babel, the uncapped pyramid. They are all in line waiting for you. Can't you see you're just another? Says in this song, nasty boogie bugs me like somebody has drugged me. The spellbound rhythm gets on my feet. I changed my life completely. I seen the lightning leave me. Wow. And my baby just can't take her eyes off me. Look, the magic mu music moves me. That dirty rhythm grooves me. The devil's got into me with his dance. Okay, so that's part one, and there is a part two. And I want you to see this, and here's why. And by the way, you know, you can order his stuff too. You know, uh, go to X Ministries, and if you want to learn more about the, you know, hip hop, and and I, I may, I may try to talk to him sometime. But if not, I might, you know, I'm going to buy his material, some of the materials anyway. Not because I agree with the guy a thousand percent on everything. I don't. I can guarantee you, I don't. Okay. But truth is truth, and this is true. What he's saying here. So. And understand, Michael Jackson, he's going to talk about how Michael Jackson... Let me read you some quotes here real quick, okay? And by the way, his channel is X Ministries. So, again, we're not going to agree with all their doctrine. That's not the point of this. I'm not telling you to run out and join his church or run out and do this. That's stuff you have to, you have to study yourself and know the truth of, all right? I don't, I don't know everything about that. But the truth is the truth, right? Michael Jackson said this, and he's going to explain this, by the way. And I watched this years ago. Years ago, I watched this, and I remembered it. And I taught on it in something called Nephilim and the Hip Hop. Uh, and I got, and I think I referenced, I did reference G. Craig Lewis. I'm almost positive I did, and gave him credit for it. Uh, for the, the stuff that, that, that he had uncovered there. Um, and I don't know about anything else other than that, as far as that goes. But he said this, I wake up from dreams and go, wow, put this down on paper. The whole thing is strange. You hear the words, everything is right there in front of your face. I feel that somewhere, someplace it's been done and I'm just a courier bringing it into the world. Rolling Stone, February 17th. 1983. Michael Jackson, Teen Beat, a tribute to Michael Jackson. He said this, When I hit the stage, it's all of a sudden a magic from somewhere that comes and the spirit just hits you and you just lose control of yourself. They won't believe it, Pastor, because it's Michael. I'm full of funky fever. A fire burns inside me. Boogie got me in a super trance. Blame it on the boogie. Quincy Jones said that when he finished this song, he couldn't stop dancing. He ran out in the street, and he was dancing uncontrollably. Man, I wish I had a video that I could show you of this guy that definitely was possessed by that same devil, I think, or something near it, because... When we were at when we were at um, when we were preaching outside of the sodomite event, this guy danced for three hours. A little skinny fruity guy, fruity pebbles, 
and he he just danced in front of us for like hours sweating it was like 95 degrees outside absolutely Aaron says Michael Jackson's father destroyed the children through trauma-based mind control you bet he did he gave him over to a bunch of white old white men in Hollywood that raped and abused him Oh, I'm not done. I haven't even started. There were three ways Michael Jackson would get his songs. You got to hear this part. Because I believe this is what led to Michael Jackson's death. I hope they come talk to me about it because I'll give them some information from the Holy Ghost. I don't need a forensic scientist. Look at somebody and say, all you got to do is ask God. God laid this out to me as plain as day. The three ways Michael Jackson got his songs. The first way Michael Jackson said, he told Martin Brashear on an interview that he would climb a tree called the given tree, tree of knowledge. Tree of knowledge. He climbed this tree and he would get his songs. Second way... Alistair Crowley said in his book, 777, that he had a room of mirrors. And if you look into a mirror, you can look into yourself and you can channel the spirits of those that were before you. He's really saying that those that may have molested you or those that may have taken from you, you can bring them back and ask them to be your guide and tell you why they did what they did to you. So Michael Jackson created a mirror, a room of mirrors that he could go in and channel spirits. And Michael Jackson chose a specific spirit. He says this, he says, I have my own secret room with a moving wall and mirrors, okay? Same room that Aleister Crowley had. He says, this is where I talk to Liberace. I hear his voice in there. I feel his presence so very close to me. He's like my guardian angel. Mm. He even gave me permission to record his title, I'll Be Seeing You. That's in the Psychic News in 1987. Liberace? Homosexual. Flamboyant homosexual. You challenge, channel the spirit of the most flamboyant homosexual of our time? And the third way is the way I believe Michael Jackson died. He said that his best songs came in dreams. Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson would channel Morpheus, the god of dreams, who studied under Serapis Bay. Serapis Bay, Ser Serapis Bay is the image that Catholics use as the image of Christ, but it's not. He has the Ra, the sun god behind his head. He looks just like Christ, but it's not just like Semiramis and Nimrod, that whole thing I told you about earlier. But he was an Egyptian incarnated God, so he would channel those spirits. He also channeled the spirits of Hypnos and Thanatos. Hypnos is the God of sleep. Thanatos is the God of death and their brothers along with Morpheus. Now what becomes very dangerous about what Michael was doing, if you read, Michael Jackson would sleep sometimes three and four days at a time because he was trying to get hit songs. He even said one time that he couldn't go to sleep. He said a spirit told him that if he did not get to sleep to get this song, the spirit is going to give it to Prince. This is where the rivalry between him and Prince birthed in the 80s, if y'all remember that. But Michael needed to sleep. So they began to sedate him heavily so he could sleep the amount of time he needed to sleep to get hits. But a 50-year-old body trying to do a world tour, hungry for the next hit song, the right dosage. I know some people are saying, well, you haven't really convinced me. I'm about to. Michael Jackson had two albums that told everything that he was doing. The first album he had that I'm going to show you 
is his history album. He built a statue of himself like Nebuchadnezzar because that Nephilim spirit in him wanted to be worshipped. But if you zoom into his arm, there is a number on his arm. And that number is seven, seven, seven. Alistair Crowley's book, seven, seven, seven. Quabalistic writings, channel Nephilim spirits for fame. Get your songs from the devil. So, uh, again, that's X Ministries, and if you want to get those videos, you can find them there. Again, I, I, the only doctrine I support 100% is the King James Bible and, you know, what we believe and hold to here. Because if I thought I was wrong, I would quit doing what I was doing and I would do what was right. So, um, but my point is, is that, that he nailed it right here. He nailed the truth of it about what was really going on. Now, there's another man that, and there's more, I mean, uh, there's so many more, but that gives you the idea of the king of pop. Like he said, what has to be done? What does that guy have to do? Well, that's what he had to do. You know, and he died drugging himself up, having people put him to sleep, trying to get those hits. A broken body and dying at 50 years old, right? So... Also, the door said this, when the Siberian shaman gets ready to go into his trance, all the villagers get together and play whatever instruments they had to ha they have to send him off into trance and possession. It was the same way with the doors when we played in concert. I think that our drug experience let us get into a trance. It was like Jim Morrison was an electric shaman, and we were electric shaman band. Shaman's band pounding away behind him. Sometimes... He wouldn't feel like getting into the state, but the band would keep on pounding and pounding and little by little it would take him over. I could send an electric shock through him with the organ. John could do it with his drum beats. Ray Manz Manzarek, was, this was cited by Jerry Hopkins. So many others you could go into. I'm not going to go into all of them. Glenn Tipton of Judas Priest says, I just go crazy when I go on stage. It's like someone else takes over my body. One of the most wicked ones of all is Carlos Santana. Carlos Santana. That guy is a devil and a half. I'm telling you, he is possessed to his toenails. This is a screenshot from... Um, a video, they sold their soul for rock and roll. Um, there is an invisible radio that Jimi Hendrix and Coltrane tuned into, and when you go there, you start channeling other music. Santana said this, The energy of devils and angels is the same energy. It's how you use it. It's fuel. The halo and the horns are the same thing. Geniuses don't have time to think about how it's going to be received. They don't have time to think whether people like it or not. Is it morally right? Will God like it? I'm telling you what, that guy is a stinking devil. He comes across in interviews as so calm and loving and sweet and all this other stuff. That guy is possessed to his toenails. Now, they all tap into this. This is what they like to have access to. They like Crowley's Kabbalistic teachings. They like his 777 book that taught him, teach you how to channel spirits and get into, get into the, the power 
uh, gematria and all those other things. That, that's what they like. That's what they teach. The Sephiroth, which is the same thing that the Kabbalistic teachers teach. That's, that's where they're at. That's what they do. That's who these people are. Now, let's see here. Carlos Santana keeps a yellow legal pad handy at the re at the recording music when recording the music when it comes to him just like a fax machine he says. Santana believes his music is channeled through a guardian angel called Metatron who has a female twin named Sandalian. He says Metatron is the architect of the electron and the angel inside the womb of every woman. He makes the fingerprints Spirit of Santana. This is Metatron, Ascended Master, right? Looks like the Ascended Master is Metatron. It's the god of the pop stars. It is a book of Enoch heresy. That's where it comes from. And that's who they worship. I mean, they're nothing but witches is what they are. He said, you mediate and you got the candles and you got the incense and you've been chanting. And all of a sudden you hear this voice, write this down. That's what they that, that's their God. That's who they follow. Just like Christians follow the God of the Bible, they follow the devil. And they follow a spirit. You know what I thought was interesting? That Metatron, Kabbalistic Metatron, that was in Transformers. This is this is who they worship. This is the angel that they worship, Metatron. It's who they follow. Metatron is a mystical being. Metatron shares the name with a figure from Earth Belief as well. Metatron, Vector Prime. Metatron fought against, the name Metatron fought against Enoch during the Age of Miracles. Vector Prime hence considered Metatron to be one of the multiverse's greatest villains. See, they, they put the, Kabbal, the, the Kabbalah in their storylines. I didn't know that years ago. I didn't know that. And Megatron is a form of that word too, by the way. That's a form of that word. That's, uh, let's see. This is Carlos Santana. I mean, all of his albums. Right? Are satanic. Metatron, Shapeshifter, Santana. Oh, yeah, I watched the original uh, Transformers. I was hooked on it, man. I loved it when I was a kid. 
this Santana story, look at this on the mystery wire. He talks about angels being invisible guides. The guy is possessed to his toenails. You can watch They Sold Their Souls for Rock and Roll there that'll have that in there. But Santana, when you look at like the titles of his albums, The Metatron Cube. Think about this. Here's your Kabbalah. Here's your Kabbalistic teaching here in Transformers. The AllSpark, also known as the Cube. Right? So all of them have the same spirit. Metatron is, a, is a, an angel. And they say it's like the king of the angels, an archangel. And really who it is is Satan. Metatron is really Satan. That's who it is. The guy's possessed. That's what he is. He talks about in this video right here, he talks about kind of how he channels everything. Or he talks about, uh, and they sold their soul for rock and roll. If you listen to that one, you'll find out how they channel everything. They do believe it's Enoch, and it's not Enoch. Enoch is who the Bible says Enoch was. When somebody tries to tell you something else about Enoch, you don't believe it. It says here in Jude that Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these things, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. Enoch preached on these things, right? Doesn't say Enoch ascended up into heaven and became somebody else. But that's what they teach. Why? Because they have devils in them. These people are possessed by spirits. And all these rappers and all these people... All these rock stars and all these other people. Um, what's her face? Uh, Beyonce. Calls herself a boy by the name of Sasha. I think it's Fierce. Right? Beyonce, I am Sasha Fierce. Well, what is she? That's a spirit. That Sasha Fierce is the spirit of a boy that she says takes over her. And that's who she becomes on stage. You got to be careful. I can't go too far down there because you never know what you're going to get. That's that that she's saying I'm possessed by a spirit. And then her husband. Calls himself Jehovah. Why is that?
because that's the spirit they have. They're blasphemers. They've already they've already given their hearts to Satan. They already follow, they already have that spirit inside of them. They're just mediums. Right? It's who they are. He wears he wears uh Aleister Crowley clothes. That's what he wears. Why? That's the spirit that he has. That's how he operates. Anyway, so that gives you a good understanding. You can go on and on and on. I'm not going to get into Met Metatron and all those things uh, with that spirit that Santana has, but Santana fully admits that's the spirit he has. And the Bible says that these perilous times would come. We'll get into their lyrics and the other things like uh, no church in the veil and all those other things that they talk about. And all their blasphemous lyrics and things that they do. But it's important to understand these people, that's the spirit they have. That's what they follow. They're possessed. They try to identify um, Metatron as Enoch, which is like that whole Ascended Master thing. All of them channel Crowley. All of them want... Uh, if you notice what G. Craig Lewis said about Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson purchased the Sony playbook. And he bought the Sony playbook, the rights to the Beatles music. And the reason he bought that was so he could channel the devils that were in that. In their magic. These people travel all over the world. To gain... to gain spiritual power. That's what they do. So they travel all over the place. They work with other artists. They do different things to gather up power. I'll, I'll tell you one of the most dangerous people that I think is a high-level witch. I'm going to show you. I think this lady's a high, I think this lady's a super high level witch. I think Dolly Parton is one of the biggest witches, oldest witches. Oldest witches out there. And one of the most deceptive witches out there. Mhm. Mm I absolutely believe that she is one of the oldest and most successive, successful witches out there. And she has tons of country type people totally deceived in America. And it's by the devils that she has. Because you look at what she believes and the things that she says, she's a witch. Hardcore witch. Hardcore. Very hardcore witch. Dangerous one. I believe. Just like I believe Kanye is a witch. Very dangerous witch Kanye is. Not as dangerous as Trump. 
I think Trump's a bigger one. Because all I know is that Kanye was $500 million in debt or $50 million in debt. And he's worth $5 billion now. So, anyway. Ozzy Osbourne said, I really wish I knew why I've done some of the things I've done over the years. I don't know if I'm a medium for some outside source. Whatever it is, frankly, I hope it's not what I think it is. Satan. Okay. Anyway, listen, sorry for the short show today, about an hour and a half, hour and 25 minutes, but uh, broadcast today, but I hope you learned some things by it, you understand some things. Listen, folks, people are deceived by this music, and as we move forward with different genres of music and we deal with different things, you've got to understand that Satan is deceiving these people. And I haven't even got to the most deceptive music yet. I'll get to that. The most, dan the, the most dangerous music on earth. I'm going to talk about that sometime soon. But anyway. Because there's some, there's some spiritually very dangerous music that's worse than this. All right, everybody. Uh, anyway, I showed you where you can find some good resources as well to study some of that stuff on your own. I would encourage you to do that as well. A little bit. If you're a new believer, don't worry about it as much. But if you have questions about rock music, questions about who these people are, that sort of thing, it's important. Um. If you want to support our ministry, you go here to Old Pass Baptist Church, and you can click on uh, Give, and our PayPal address is salvationpreacher at gmail.com, uh, or you can send us something. The address is down at the bottom here, and um, if the Lord so leads you to do something like that. Anyway, but uh, I'll be back, Lord willing, on Wednesday. Uh, hopefully everything will work fine and we'll be on 2 to 4 p.m. Central Time and uh, look forward to it. So you all have a good night and uh, 